Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sor Darkchild, and welcome back to Let's Replay. Phoenix Radius Attorney, Dual Destinies. Last time, after declaring our uh, client not guilty and her owner being declared the new uh, client, we investigated the aquarium once again to find out more information that we could put in order to make our case to help the uh, new client, including meeting the uh, the uh, resident ve veterinarian, talk to Marlin again, and then we learned from our client that there was a trainer before her named uh, Azira Summers, who died of the same heart condition in the same heart condition that our current client has. And that she kept the charm that she owned and told us that her boyfriend, whoever that is, had the same charm, a matching one. And now that we have most of the charms, uh, evidence that we could muster up for the time being, it's time to go to trial and see if we can get our second client off the hook. No pun intended. July 27th, 2027. 9.17 a.m. District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 3. What? The ship's doctor and Azura were romantically involved? Well, that's my theory, but I don't actually know if it's really true. Azura would never get involved with that card awful ship's doctor. But I do admit, they were friends. But would Azura send Dr. Crab videos, I wonder? Videos? What do you mean? Azura used to send her boyfriend's videos of herself teaching an orca tricks. I used to help Azura uh, take the videos on her TV phone. Hmm. This is an interesting bit of information. So, TV phones in can shoot videos too, huh? My dumb phone sure can't. These TV phones are amazing! They can even record sounds you and I can't hear! All the equipment we use at the Shipshape Aquarium is high-tech. The ship's doctor sends away all, all kinds of electronics. So, all of the high-tech stuff is Dr. Krabs doing, huh? Anyway, I still highly he trout Azura's his boyfriend and was the ship's doctor. But Dr. Crab found a charm yesterday and he was really shaken by it. Charm? Hey, leave that alone! That belongs to Azura! What was Azura's charm doing in Rifle's stomach? That, tar that charm looked all just like the k your keepsake of Azura. Yeah, well, well, she did say that she and her boyfriend had matching charms. Were the ship's doctor and Azura really a couple? I can't believe it. I think Dr. Crab will be called as a witness today. There are still so many unanswered questions but I hope to solve them all in today's trial. I believe in you two. I know you can do it. And we will, Sasha. We promise.
court is now in session for the trial of Sasha Buckler. The defense is ready. Ah! Ready. Now I'm completely thrown off! Very good. It appears both the prosecution and the defense are ready. Yesterday, it was proven that the Orca was not guilty and that the victim fell to his death. Prosecutor Blackwell, did your investigation of the Orca pool area turn up anything? Hmm. It did. We found a blood stain from the victim at the bottom of the pool. On this. Oh my, what a frightening looking rock! And you say it has the blood stain on it? Hmm. Just looking at it gives me the willies. So, can we assume that there are no... There was no water in the pool at the time of the incident? Very good. What a clever little deduction. Oh, oh, oh well. It's nice to get a compliment from the prosecution for a change. Prosecutor Blackwell has completely tamed the judge with his carrot and stick approach. I guess I should have brought a few carrots of my own. Right, moving along. We have prepared a witness. Miss Buckler was the only one who entered that room when there was no water in the pool. The witness will prove that. Come to the stand, witness. Name and occupation. Dr. Herman C Sniper, stay in there! And who is that cute little creature? <laughs> Such a restless bird, quite unlike Taka. Wow. Chalk up one for Taka. He shut Sniper up with a single sound! Son of a gun! Dr. Herman Crab, Shipshape Aquarium's veterinarian. And could you tell us the name of your cute little friend there as well? Your Honor, please focus on the case. But it's important to learn all we can about the witness! This is Sniper. She's the offspring of a penguin named Rifle. Sniper lives in my hair. She might cause a commotion now and then, but please, try to ignore her. I was originally going to call the Animal Keeper to the stand, but he refused to testify. So, I settled on the veterinarian. Now tell us. Why was the defendant in the orca pool room when the water was drained? Cleaning the orca pool room. In the early morning hours of July 20th, Sasha was cleaning the orca pool room. Sasha and Jack Shipley, the owner, were scheduled to do the cleaning together. During the cleaning, the water is drained. While the draining is going on, Marlin was taking care of the orca in the show pool. The pool water would never be drained unless the pool was being cleaned. Hmm. And your claim is that the victim was made to fall to his death during the cleaning? Hmm. A 
only Buckler and the owner had the security card necessary to enter the Orca pool room. And we already know from the security card company record card usage that the defendant was in the Orca pool during the time of the cleaning. The witness's testimony he and the record of the security card usage are conclusive evidence. So no one besides the defendant was at the scene and the water in the pool was drained. Uh-oh, the judge already seems to be leaning towards, towards the other side. We have to strike fast. Your Honor, we're ready for our cross-examination now. Oh, yes, of course. Please proceed then. The power of youth comes in handy at times like these. In the early mornings of t July 20th, Hith Sasha was cleaning the orca pool. Why is the cleaning done so early in the morning? Essentially, he he the middle of the night. Our aquarium is open every day of the year without break. So of course the cleaning has to be done at night when there are no visitors. <laughs> no days off, is that it? I can relate to that. Yeah, because prisoners don't get to take days off. Things sure are different around our office, huh, boss? You don't have to rub it in so quite so enthusiastically. So, was the defendant cleaning alone? No. Sasha and Jack Shipley, the owner, were scheduled to do the cleaning together. But Miss Buckler said that Shipley never showed up to help with the cleaning. I don't know anything about that, but I know it was. It is what uh what was on the schedule. Maybe they changed plans. They probably felt awkward with each other after their fight. In any case, there's no proof the victim entered the orca pool room during the cleaning. If you don't stop your yammering, I will pull your tongue out with and barbecue it. Yeah. Do you have to be so violent? Proof or none, the victim must have entered the pool room during the cleaning. Witness, tell him why. Jack must have entered the orca pool room. The reason I think so is because... The record card usage shows that Sasha entered the Orca pool room. Don't you mean to say that the record showed both of their cards hurts being used? No, only Sasha's. But they must have gone in together. Jack's body was found in the room. So, that's the only logical explanation. We talked about this just yesterday. What the purpose does... What proposed... What purpose does that brain of yours serve? Yeah. You're even more brain dead than rifle. Witness, I will not allow birds to be belittled by my presence. In my presence. Limit your despairing comments to the defense alone. So I get this... This purge... Hedge either way. Great. <laughs> Bird lover, huh? I guess we're not destined to become best friends. That is fine. All I need is for you to talk about the state of the scene of during cleaning. 
Alright, fine. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I think the two of them were made for each other. During the cleaning, the pool water is drained. Hold it! So the cleaning is done with the pool drained of water? That's right. They use the hoist there to lower themselves into the bottom of the pool. They can do regular cleaning with water in the pool, but this was an in intensive session. I never clean my own lab, however. Don't you think it might be due then? I guess I can't talk, though. Well, Sasha and Marlin can come in and clean it for me on occasion. But I'm too busy myself. Oh, I have animals to look after. Look, th this one, for example. Like this one, for example. Such an adorable little creature. It lends cheer to this bleak courtroom. Your reaction to Taka was very different, as I recall. Oh, oh Tataka is a fine bird too, of course. P please continue, Dr. Crab, quickly now. As I was saying, Sasha was cleaning the Orca pool room. While the while the cleaning was going on, Han Marlin was taking care of the orca in the show pool. Hold it. So Orla was moved all the way over to the show pool. Why is that? Well, it wouldn't do who to get her covered in cleanser, would it? Of course, she was moved. You don't take a bath while you're cleaning a, cleaning the tub, do you? Excellent point! I usually clean the tub after I take a bath myself! <laughs> I was assigned to clean the shower stalls yesterday. They were cleaner than an Edo bathhouse by the time I was done. I guess Prosecutor Blackwell is... Fastidious is the fastidious type. I polished it so well, I bet the inmates are slipping and sliding all over right about now. Maybe it's not so much much the fastidious type as the prankster type. So somehow, I don't think that's it either. Anyway, cleaning the orca pool is just like cleaning a tub. The pool water her would never be drained unless the pool was being cleaned. There's no possibility it would be drained at any time other than during the cleaning. None. Ugh. Shot down with a single word. Why are you so certain? Think about it. If the pool water were drained, what would happen to the orca? The, the pool thing. The poor thing. Whose side are you on, Athena? Exactly, young lady. Without water, the orca would all would be all right for a short period of time. But anything longer than that would pose a serious risk. She could even die. So the fact that Orla is alive and well is proof the water wasn't trained on her. That's right. The Orca pool and the show stage pool are next to each other. The hoist runs between the two 
who to move the orca and equipment back and forth. When intensive cleaning is done, the orca is moved to the show stage pool first. So that water is only drained while the pool is being cleaned. Hmm. Please add that to your testimony. Please add that information to your testimony. If there were no water in the pool, the orca could die. Objection! If the water in the pool was drained, you say the orca could die? But is that necessarily true? What are you talking about? There is a way to let the water out without harming the orca, isn't there? Your Honor, please allow me to submit this photograph. Oh, is this? As you can see, there is no water around the skull air skull rock area. With the pool in this state, the victim could have made hit the fall could have been made to fall to his death. However, there is water on the other side of the portion. And Orla looks just fine. Son of a gun! In other words, if the parti partition is set up, up at the bottom of the pool, the water can be drained without doing Arla any harm. Are you implying the water could have been drained at the time of the... other than during the cleaning? Yes, there is that possibility. Dr. Crab is shaking. Looks like he has something to hide. Could it have something to do with the calendar note about meeting with the victim? It might. I'll sm submit it to the judge. Your Honor, please take a look at this calendar. Ah, you waited. You waved that around in court yesterday. No need to drag it out your souvenir today. Actually, I would like you to make a note hold up the entry for the day of the incident. Let me see here. Meet the captain at the Orca Pool at 7 a.m. This is a note about meeting the plan with the victim. What? What? The defense would like to argue that at the time of the meeting, the pool may have been drained of its water. Whose calendar is that? It belongs to Dr. Herman Crab. Isn't that right, Dr. Crab? Son of a gun! So you suspect me, do you? What is the meaning of this calendar entry, Dr. Crab? Explain yourself! Fine. I was supposed to meet Jack at the Orca Pool at that time. But I ended up not going. So you're saying you simply broke your promise? You can't get out of it that easily. I believe you have some explaining to do. Objection! Your blade is sharper than I thought, right, Dono? But your cart is shallow. A mere surface scratch. There's a saying amongst prisoners. Do not see, hear, nor speak to sm smooth talking lawyers. If you think the witness is suspicious, show your proof. The calendar alone isn't good enough, huh? I have to prove the victim could have fallen to his death at 7 a.m. morning meeting time. Let's put our heads together, boss. 
The victim could have fallen during when the pool was completely drained. Or using the partition, and it could have been at 7 a.m. when the water partially drained. Would that be a major... What would be the major difference in circumstances between the two possibilities? Hmm. What circumstance is different? The answer could really tell us something. What circumstances is different between the two possibilities of cleaning and 7 a.m.? If the murder occurred at the time other than during the cleaning, the orca must have been there. Oh, you're right. And that would mean that... Orla witnessed the murder. What's this? You're sheathing your sword so soon? Stop yammering to your... to each other and show me what you wield your sword. How you wield your sword. Alright then. My sword is poised and ready. If the murder was committed at the time other than the cleaning time then Orla must have been present at the scene. If I can prove that the murder happened right in front of Orla, then I can prove that Miss Buckler is not guilty. Order, order in the court. Mr. Wright, are you implying that the Orca was a witness to a crime? That is exactly what I'm implying. Hmm. And? How do you intend to prove the Orga witnessed the murder? What are you going to do? Put an Orca on the stand and cross-examine her? This is a crucial point. I better think this about think about it carefully. The defense will. The defense will present evidence. Evidence that will prove Orca wit Orla witnessed the murder. You're going to present evidence? Knowing the defense, I thought surely you would try to cross-examine the Orca. I must say, I'm a little disappointed. Gee, sorry to get your hopes up, your honor. Very well, let's see this evidence then. What evidence shows that the murder took place right in front of the orca? Take that! This photo indicates where we discovered the luminal reactions yesterday. By accident, we got some of the luminal testing fluid on the orla. We were then very surprised to see luminal reactions on Orla's body. So what of it? There's nothing odd about that. It was discussed yesterday's in yesterday's trial. The Orca was bleeding. Traces of the Orca's blood were also found on the skull rock. The orca must have injured herself when she rammed the rock. So that cloud of blood Mr. Bloom saw was from Orla's red head biting the skull rock, was it? Those luminal reactions you saw on the orca are most likely from her head biting. But what's odd about the position of those he blood stains? Please take a look at the photograph. Yesterday, Mr. Plume said the blood disappeared when Orla put the hat on. That testimony indicates that Orla's injuries were under the hat area. However, 
These luminal reactions are in two entirely separate areas from her injuries. These bloodstains can't be Orla's own blood from when she was headbutting. Th then where did the blood come from? It's my firm belief that it's the victim's blood. The victim was killed right in front of Orla. And the victim's blood splattered onto Orla's body. Gah. Now it finally makes sense. Orla was a witness to the murder. That, so that's why. Orla? Boss, something's wrong with Orla. What? Are, you're right. She's li she's listless. Yes. And she's sinking. There's one more fact that indicates Orla was a witness to the murder. There's more? The culprit was afraid he'd Orla could somehow reveal what she witnessed. And that's why he, they did what they did. It's the only thing that makes sense. I have to present that evidence. That evidence that proves the culprit thought Orla was a dangerous witness. Take that! The defense would like to submit this evidence. What's this? It looks like some sort of medicine. It's a sleeping drug, Your Honor. A very powerful one. This sleeping drug was discovered in Orla's stomach yesterday. The culprit tried to drown Orla by putting her into a deep sleep. Tried to drown the orca? But why? Right, Dono. Are you trying to tell this court that the perpetrator tried to kill the orca to prevent a witness from talking? Do you really expect to def defeat me with a feeble attack? My sword has been drawn. I'm not about to sheathe my evidence now. Orcas have an enormous potential for intelligence. The possibility that Orla could somehow manage to reveal the truth can't be denied. The culprit believed that in this possibility, and that's why they tried to kill her. Dr. Herman Crabb, you purchased the sleeping drug, didn't you? What? Does this mean the veterinarian tried to do away with the orca? Who put the who put a veterinarian who but a veterinarian would better know how to disguise an orca's death? He could even prevent the police from examining the orca's bo orla's body. Why you? Are you actually accusing me of trying to murder the orca? How dare you! How dare you slander the normal profession of a veterinarian! Ick! Ick! My goodness! One could cut the tension in this courtroom with a knife! Yes, I admit to purchasing that sleeping drug. However, it was subsequently stolen from my lab. That's such a flimsy excuse. It's the truth. Oof, what else can I say? Any one of the crew members could have entered my lab. I guess that weakness may... I guess that weakens my evidence quite a bit. Besides, think about it for a minute. Who was it that had treated Orla after she swallowed the drug? It was I! But as I recall, it took you quite a while to give her that treatment. You didn't even come on your own. We had to go get you. Son of a gun! 
You just remember all sorts of little details, don't you, Mr. Lawyer? The Orca Pool and the lab are far apart. It's little wonder he didn't know Orla's condition. Objection. Didn't know? That's highly doubtful. As far apart as they were, Dr. Krabs still had a way of knowing in all about Orla's condition. This defense would like to submit evidence that the witness knew about the uh, Orla's condition. Take that. The torpedo! You just had to bring that up, didn't you? With this advanced data system, surely you would have known Orla's condition! Objection. Wait just a moment. One moment. What is this torpedo? Dr. Crab, how dare you bring a weapon of mass destruction into my courtroom? The torpedo, or teleobservation, real-time patient, patient data uh, organizer, is a data system. Until yesterday, only Dr. Crab and Mr. Shipley knew about the torpedo. It isn't legally approved in this country, so it was kept secret from the police. It, it's illegal? Dr. Crab, I demand an explanation! Son of a gun! You in your big mouth, Mr. Lawyer! Yes, it's true! I'm using an illegal system monitor to, cur to monitor creatures at the aquarium. The system uses sensors like these, and yes, there it, there's one in the orca's pool, too. These sensors send sound waves through the water her to give data to the cre on the creatures. But if, if, but if it sounds abnormalities in their condition, the torpedo alerts me with a sound. Oh my goodness, how very high tech. But if it's illegal, I will not turn a blind eye. This matter will be appointed appro appropriately dealt with at a separate time. Now then, Mr. Wright, please continue. With the torpedo, I'm sure Mr. Crab noticed the danger Orla was in. But he made no attempt to come to her aid at, on his own. And the reason for this is that Dr. Crab wanted Orla dead. The torpedo didn't give me a warning message. That's why I didn't know where there were anything wrong with Orla. The sensor in the pool, orca pool wasn't working during the police investigation. Objection! Can you prove that statement? Objection. <laughs> What's with him? I guess this is all so high tech for Prosecutor Blackwell that it's making him a little funny. Funny? Yes, I find this all very funny funny. Witness, those sensors send sound waves through the water, correct? But what if there isn't any water? Then they wouldn't work. Herc, they would automatically switch off. I see. And where is the sensor in the orca pool located? I don't know. Jack is the one who attached it for me. You don't know? Then I will tell you. The police found a sensor just like the one you just showed us. They found it attached to the table at the bottom of the pool. Table? Do you mean 
in the table in this photograph? That's right. Don't you get it yet, right, Dono? The table is on the Skull Rock side of the portion. Partition. It's affixed next to the bottom of the pool and can't be moved. Oh, and so if the water was drained from the Skull Rock side of the pool... Precisely. Without water, the torpedo sensor would not work. Witness, when did that sensor automatically switch off? Hang on, I'll look it up. The only time lately were during the cleaning two days ago and the investigation yesterday. Of course, I knew the pool would be drained while they cleaned it. But I had no idea they drained it for the investigation. No one let me know! That's why I didn't know about Orla's condition yesterday! So Dr. Crab really did want to save Orla? <laughs> did you hear that right, Dono? Yes, the water can be drained without harm to the orca if the partition is used. But if the water is drained from the Skull Rock side, the sensor runs itself off, turns itself off. If the sensor was always on the on except for during the cleaning and the investigation, it means there must have been water in the pool at all, all other times. It was never drained. In other words, no one but the defendant could have committed the crime. Yeah! Order! Order in the court! This is com this completely shatters the defense's argument! Yeah, but, but... The fact still remains that Orla was nearly killed by the Dr. Crab's sleeping pills! Objection. But aren't you forgetting one important question? When was the sleeping drug given to the Orca? You're right. That is, that hasn't been discussed yet, has it? The orca pool is the scene of the murder. The police were all over, were there all day yesterday. The only way to give the drug to the orca undetected is to put it in her food. Yesterday, someone gave the orca food during the trial. Someone did? I'm afraid I don't remember that. You don't remember? You're not that old, are you? It was the defendant, Sasha Buckler. Ah! Hmm. So that... So that is the orca that stands accused, is it? Ah, she's waving her flippers at us. Maybe she's cheering us on? Orla, wish Phoenix and Athena right. So your argument is that Ms. Buckler is the one who gave the orcas the drug? The prosecution's argument hasn't changed. Buckler made the victim fall to his death and then manipulated the orca to pin it on her. Still not satisfied, she further planned to kill the orca with a sleeping drug. Hmm. I didn't hear any reports of Dr. Crab feeding Orla. Maybe he didn't have a hand in Orla's attempt to mur attempted murder after all. But is there anyone else who could have fed Orla besides Sasha? Hmm. If that's true, then the defendant is... is the one who fed the sleeping drug to the Orca. Then that places even more suspicion on her than ever. Objection! 
The defense will object to the prosecution's claims. Well, well, you still haven't admitted defeat. Prosecutor Blackwell, I don't appreciate the way you only mention the parts that are convenient to you. Hmm. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? The prosecution failed to mention that Ms. Buckler wasn't the only one who fed Orla. As you will recall, there was another person who gave Orla food. Oh, you mean that person? Looks like Athena remembers now. Hell too. Congrats, Sasha! Time to celebrate! Go on, eat up! Mr. Wright, no! I don't want to believe it either, but we can't ignore the truth. The other person who fed Orla during in the trial was... Take that! Please recall when and Orla was found not guilty yesterday. Marlon Rhymes gave the Orca a large quantity of food. If the sleeping drug was mixed in with that food, it could be given to the Orca without accuse arousing police suspicion. But now that you mention it, I do remember that flip-flopper feeding the Orca. Objection! So you remember, did you? I see the time for the true sword fight has come. I call Marlin Rhymes to the stand. Mr. Lawyer, both Miss Orca, her lover, and Mr. Her Marlin Rhymes are important members to our crew. I don't want to suspect either of them, but I'm ready to accept whatever truth you find. Here, take this. That charm. Isn't it's the charm that m matches one Miss Azura Summers had, had, isn't it? So you and Miss Summers were romantically involved, weren't you, Mr. Crab? What? No, of course not. Sorry to disappoint you, but this doesn't belong to me. At the time, I thought it was Azura's, so I grabbed it. But it wasn't hers. Now it's up to you, Mr. Lawyer, to figure out whose charm it is. I will. Thank you, Dr. Crab. After all, I'm interested in the outcome of this trial, too. Now then, please summon Marlon Rhymes to the witness stand. Well, what's going on? What's everyone making that face for? I haven't been watching the trial and nobody's told me anything. Marlon Rhymes, you are under suspicion for the attempted murder of the Orca. I see. Well, if it's already out... M Mr. Rhymes? Is he really going to admit it? Fine. I'll tell the truth. Sasha is lying to protect that orca. At 3.30 a.m. on the 20th, there was still water in that orca pool. The incident happened before the orca was moved to the show pool. Orla killed the captain by bashing him 30 feet high. <sighs> by blasting him. By. It was. Orla killed the captain by bashing him 30 feet high and making him slam into the water. So I thought the orca should pay the consequences. Now we're back to the orca again? 
I did not see that testimony coming. Now wait just one minute. Yesterday, Orla was proven innocent. Besides, you said Orla was in the show pool during the cleaning. I didn't want to sell Sasha out. That's why I didn't tell the truth. The fact is, but the fact is, all three of us, the captain, Sasha, and me, were cleaning the pool room. But Dr. Crabb and Miss Buckler both said you were at the show stage. Well, the only thing Dr. Crabb knew about the cleaning was that I to was what I told him. I didn't give him the whole lot of details either. Maybe he misunderstood. And Sasha well, is lying to protect that orca. Uh, I can't, she can't tell the truth. Sasha put blood on this skull rock herself to make a fake blood stain. I think it's pretty brave of her to let herself be or get arrested to protect the orca. Mr. Rhymes, how can you lie like that? It's the truth! Besides, Haynes, wouldn't it be better for you if, it, if I was li wasn't lying? If the orca did it, you win your case! What? This is all very hard to believe. But if Mr. Rhymes' story is true, Ms. Buckler would be innocent and the orca would be the killer. Meaning if we turn our backs on Orla, we could save Sasha? Having a witness lie to save your own client? What a dirty, underhanded tactic, right, Dono? Objection! Yesterday, the defendant was pr proved Orla was not guilty. We have no intention of going back on our assertions now. What are you saying, Mr. Wright? All you gotta do is admit the Orca did it and Sasha goes free! Isn't that... Isn't a lawyer supposed to act in his client's best interest? But that wouldn't be acting in her interest. Miss Buckler believes Orla is innocent. And we, of course, believe that Miss Buckler herself is innocent too. Acting in the client's best interest is an important part of our job as lawyers. Using dirty means to win a verdict would destroy our client's faith in us. That's right. We believe in both Miss Buckler and Orla's innocence. Huh? I just don't understand how you can treat a human and an orca equally. Sasha or the orca, you can only save one of them. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think I can save them both. All I have to do is disprove your testimony. Oh yeah? Then go ahead and try. I will do just that. If I can tear down his testimony, I won't be able to save both of them. I have to find a weak spot and start tearing. And I know just the statement. Sasha is lying to protect that orca. At 3.30 a.m., him on the 20th, there was still water in the pool. The incident happened before the orca was moved to the show pool. The orca killed the captain by bashing him 30 feet high and making him slam into the water. Objection! When lies are piled on top of each other, contradiction starts to emerge. This time is no different. Are you saying there's some kind of inconsistency in my testimony? That's right. That's exactly what I'm saying. 
You claim that the victim was flying about 30 feet into the air? But the autopsy report shows that, uh, that the apparent cause of death was from a 60-foot fall. 65-foot fall. What? Additionally, he, in your testimony a moment ago, you stated that at 3.30 a.m. on the 20th, there was still water in the Orca pool. With the pool hole being 65 feet deep, there's only 30 feet between the water and the ceiling. If the pool was full of water, as you claimed, it would be impossible for the victim to fall about 65 feet, as the autopsy states. Ah! Mr. Rhymes claimed he was in the Orca pool room at so he could make these statements. But the truth must be, he was at the show stage, just as Mr. Crab, Dr. Crab, and, and Sasha testified. Hmm. I believe that brings us back around to the Orca didn't do it. I didn't believe in the witnesses, his testimony from the outset. I am grateful to you, Right Dono, for shutting the witness up. As I thought, the only person who could have killed the victim is Sasha Buckler. That fact still remains whether the witness has was the one who tried to kill the Orca or not. Son of a... Mr. Ryans was right about one thing, his testimony was advantageous to our case. But pointing out the contradiction in his statement will only drive us into a corner. As Prosecutor Blackpool says, suspicion against Miss Buckler is now deepened. Uh-oh. If I don't do something fast, the judge is going to find Sasha guilty. Mr. Wright, isn't there anything we can do? There has to be a way to prove Sasha is innocent. At a time like this, the thing to do is turn my thinking around. Instead of trying to prove that Sasha couldn't have done it, I have to think about what made it possible for somebody else to have done it. As long as the crime scene is the Orca pool room, then Sasha is the only one who could have committed the crime. No need for pity or baldness. Just finish him off with a swift verdict. It appears the defense has no objections. Very well. I will give my verdict. Your Honor, please, hold off on that verdict. But... You were so quiet, Mr. Wright. Do you have something to say now? The defense has a counter-argument. You do? <laughs> Pitiful. Such desperation. You look pale. Are you sure you aren't prepared, you're prepared to make this counter-argument? The worst times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. I'll never forget those words, no matter how many years go by. Even though it's probably just a bluff, I'll give it, it to them with a smile. What if the scene of the crime was somewhere else? The scene of the crime? Somewhere else? What? You're finding fault with the police investigation now? As I understand it, the prosecution's argument is as follows. The scene of the crime was the Orca pool room. Only the defendant and the victim entered that room when there was no water in the pool. 
Therefore, only the defendant could have committed the crime. That is correct. But if the scene of the crime was not the Orca pool room, then somebody other than the defendant could have committed the crime. Are you sure you know what you're, where you're going with this? I might not be too sure, but I can't back down now. Mr. Wright, I hope that I'm wrong, but this isn't the but this isn't one of your bluffs by any chance. <laughs> of course not. The judge knows me far too well. And do you have a theory on where the actual scene of the crime was? Uh, yes, of course. Think, Phoenix, think. Think of a place other than the orca pool room where, the, where one could fall to one's death. Then by all means, please share your theory with the court. Where was the real scene of the murder? Where else could it be? The show pool... The show stage pool might have been drained of water at some point as well. And if so, it would just be as possible to fall to one's death if there as the orca pool. Right, Dono. What you're doing is a disgrace to your profession. I sincerely hope you have some basis for what you're suggesting. Of course I do. I will as soon as I think of something. The victim's body was found in the orca pool. How do you explain that? How about if, after the victim was killed in the show stage pool, his body was moved to the orca pool? How about if? What kind of presentation for an argument is that? You have better have a reasonable explanation of how the body was moved. There's no turning back now. I have to think of a way the body could have been moved. Was there something at the scene of the crime that could be used to move the body? Of course. Take that! The horse runs between the orca pool and the show stage. The stretcher can be he hung from the hoist he's to move things like Orla or the Skull Rock. These stretchers could also have been mo used to move the dead body. Hmm. Yes, if the stretcher can move the Orca huh, or a Skull Rock, it seems likely it could also move a dead body as well. Wow, somehow that worked. I just might be able to pull this off. If the show pool was the scene of the crime, somebody else could have done it. <laughs> you desperately spew conjecture and now you even make up a crime scene? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Not again! You don't even have the soul of a warrior. You don't deserve to be on the battlefield. And even your fabrication is half-baked. It's a disgrace. W what do you mean, half-baked? The hoist can be operated from the orca pool room only. Yeah. And the only person who entered the orca pool room was the defendant. So even if the body was moved, the only one who could have moved it was the defendant herself. Ah! Order! So it comes back to the defendant no matter which pool it was. 
Meaning, I can't clear Sasha either way? Sasha said she moved the or Orla and the Skull Rock. And I believe her. So, could it be possible that she moved the body herself without being aware of it? Mr. Wright, do you have an objection to Prosecutor Black Oil's claim? Do I have an objection to claim to the claim that the defendant moved the body? Uh no. No, we don't. I have no objections. Miss Buckler, her must have been the one who moved the body. W what? Mr. Wright, are you admitting the defendant committed the murder? No, I'm simply conceding the fact heck, that she was the only one who could have moved the body. However, I contend Miss Buckler was not aware that it was... That it, that is what she was doing. The culprit made her move it unbeknownst to her. The defendant moved the dead body without recognizing that it was a dead body? How could that be possible? The body was found in the orca pool. It must be moved there somehow. I must think of some kind of hint in the things she moved with the stretcher. The culprit made Miss Buckler move the body no along with the with this piece of equipment. Take that. The skull rock. Miss Buckler told me yesterday that she moved the skull rock when she was cleaning. The only two things Miss Buckler moved to the orca pool are Orla and the Skull Rock. I would like to suggest that the victim's body may have been inside the Skull Rock. W what? Hidden inside the rock, the body could have been moved to the Orca Pool, but with the hoist. At this... At the show stage, Marlon Rhymes loaded up the skull rock with the body inside. And then he used the walkie-talkie to let Miss Buckler know the rock was loaded. Miss Buckler operated the hoist from the Orca pool room and moved the stretcher. She moved the rock without knowing the body was inside. Do you really think there's enough space inside the rock to place a body? The swashbuckler, her flyer, indicates it could be possible. Please focus on the question. Please focus on the question at the bottom of the rock, of the left. Oh, it says, who will obtain the gold, hold coins? hidden in the Skull Rock. Hmm. In that case, I suppose the rock is most likely hollow. What's more, if the body was inside the Skull Rock, it explains the remaining unanswered questions. Such as? Please take a look at the security footage hitch of the scene Mr. Plume witness. Where did the body that Mr. Plume saw come from? Please recall, what was Orla doing into the Skull Rock at the time? She was headbutting it. Oh! That's right, Orla's ramming released the body from the Skull Rock. The body had been placed inside the Skull Rock and moved there from the show stage. I assert that the real murder scene was, in fact, the show stage, Hinge Pool. Silence. Hm. What rubbish is this now? You don't have a single scrap of evidence. Objection! It's easy enough to verify what I say. 
Hey, take a look inside the skull rock for yourself. You should find some kind of proof that the body was there. Blood, fibers, hair. Gah! Right, don't know. Mr. Wright, that was incredible. You turned this complete things completely around. And to and to think, it all started with the half baked bluff too. Phew, that was a close one. Did you really have to add that last bit? If the murder took place in the show stage, then who is the perpetrator? It is naturally the person who was at the show stage. Mr. Rhymes, weren't you the one who loaded the skull onto the rock? Weren't you the one who loaded the skull rock onto the stretcher at the show stage? <laughs> wow, Mr. Wright. That was some pretty smart brain work you did there. To be honest, I never thought you could figure it out. I tried to protect myself, but I guess it's come back to bite me. Are you confessing you gave false testimony before, Mr. Rhymes? That's perjury! Yeah. Uh, what Mr. Wright says is true. The body was inside the skull rock. And it's true the captain was killed in the show stage pool, too. What? He's admitting that easily? This time, I'm going to tell you the whole truth about what happened that day. The whole truth. The show pool. In the show pool, the orca shot the captain up into the air. Then, and the captain came down and slammed into the water. I can still remember the spectator's scream clearly. All Sasha did was move the body. She was trying to protect or the orca. When Miss De Plume witnessed the orca finding the body, I freaked. Hmm. So now we're back to the orca again, I see. If you were going to give testimony like that, why did you why did I bother putting you on the stand? All I'm doing is telling the truth. That day Sasha wanted to do the old version of the swashbuckler spectacular. So I suggested she hide the body in the skull rock to and move it to the orca pool. I was going to figure out what to do with the body after the show was over. The orca in the water heard that killed the captain. It wasn't me. It was... And it wasn't Sasha. So it was Mr. Rhymes' idea to hide the body in the skull rock. But if Mr. Rhymes is the culprit, why would he protect Sasha? False charges against Sasha would mean he himself would escape suspicion, so why? Mr. Wright, how about if you leave this to me? Athena, do you mean you heard something? Yep, noise, discord in Mr. Rhymes' heart. So that means somewhere in his testimony, there's an inconsistency in his emotions. All right, Athena. Give him a good counseling session. You got it, boss. Huh? What's this? What are you getting, Athena? Hmm. This testimony is pretty complex. Feelings of deep sadness and intense anger are being called up. Those emotions apart appear to be running out of control. 
out of control emotions? Is is that going to be a problem? We'll have to probe their causes his, if we want to get his true emotions and testimony. There might even be he odd and unusual, unnatural spots in his testimony he isn't even aware of. All right. Let's probe hope for the cause of his out-of-control emotions. I'll explain how to probe. Let's find the root of the cause together. We already know about the whole probe thing. We've done it before in the uh, previous case. So I'm pretty much just going to skip this. Great. All right. Let's get started. Hit comparing the statements with the image. In the show pool, the orca shot the captain up into the air. Then the captain came down and slammed into the water. I can still remember her the spectator scream clearly. Got it. I doubt there were any spectators there at the show stage pool when the owner died. If there had been, those witnesses his would have told us that's the true crime scene right away. What? Oh, right. Of course. I just made a mistake. Okay, that made the sadness subside. So, maybe the spectator's part was... was what was making him sad? I wonder why he would make a mis make that mistake saying the suspectors were there. Her, how strange. The only thing I can think of is that he was mixing up one memory with another. Like he was in a similar situation before, and it was deeply imprinted into his heart. A situation where an orca killed somebody... And there were spectators there. Hey, I think I know why he's mixing up his memories. The reason why Mr. Rhymes mixed up his memories is... Take that! Mr. Rhymes, I think I know what happened. Could you have been mixed up with what happened a year ago with, the inc with this incident? Maybe that's why you slipped and said this owner was killed in front of the spectators. What? How did you... You're right. I did see the orca kill somebody a year ago. But what of it? It was just one of the spectators. I was one of... Th I was just one of the spectators. Really? Just another spectator? There must be a reason why you feel a great sadness about that incident a year last year. Stop this nonsensical sick scrutiny of feelings. Just present evidence to prove your point. Eep. But boss, us, do we have any kind of evidence that would back us up here? Hmm, there is one piece that comes to mind that might explain his sadness. Well, I'm waiting. Let's see this evidence that has to do with Mullen Rhyme's sadness. Take that! Azura Somers died in an accidental death a year, one year ago. Oh, this is her boyfriend's charm. Uh, hey! We're... Richard, what are you doing with that charm? It was found in Rifle's stomach yesterday. 
Judging by your reaction, I believe this charm belongs to you. I guess I need to push him a l just a little harder to... I guess I need to push him a little harder to make him admit it. When Mr. Rhymes said the word charm, he was very rattled. We'd better examine this charm a little more. Good idea. Let's look inside it. Huh? What's this? A photograph! Hey, this is... Azura Summers and Marlon Rhymes? Mr. Rhymes, you and Azura Summers were a couple, weren't you? Yeah. So what if we were a couple? It doesn't have anything to do with the captain's case. You believe you saw the orca kill your girlfriend. That's your... That's the cause of your sadness. Isn't that emotion of yours con connected to the current case? Silence. The only thing you revealed was the witness's connection to the victim of last year's incident. What does the witness's past have to do with the case at hand? You don't... I don't know yet. But we managed to pinpoint the source of his sadness. Now... Let's delve into Mr. Rhymes is who Mr. Rhymes is angry at. Well, who else would it be? Got it. Mr. Rhymes, are you angry with Orla? You're angry with Orla, aren't you? Angry at an orca? Why would I be? If you think I have some reason to be mad, then show me proof. Do I have proof that Mr. Rhymes has a reason to be mad? I've got your proof. I bet that evidence we just us took a look at would come in handy here. And this charm indicates that you were Az Azura Summer's boyfriend. I'm sure you believe Orla killed your girlfriend a year ago. You lost your girlfriend and so you've been angry at Orla. Alright, I admit it. I'll never forgive that orca. Azura is dead and that orca is still swimming around happy as a clam. I became an animal keeper just so I could prove that Orca is a killer. You're right. Hey, I want that Orca to pay. There. Her, do you feel good dragging up that a person's past? But it still doesn't change anything. Ah, he's right. I disagree. It does change things. He's out of control. Emotions quiet it down. Now, we should be able to find out all the truth behind that emotion. The show pool. In the show pool, the orca shot the captain up into the air. Then the captain came down and slammed into the water. I can still remember the captain's dead body clearly. All she did was move the body. She was trying to protect the orca. When Miss Daybloom witnessed the orca finding the body, I freaked. When Misty Bloom witnessed an orca uh, finding the body, you freaked. Really? What are you getting at? 
With Mr. Plume as a witness, Orla was guaranteed to be accused of murder. Didn't it work out exactly as you hoped? In order to have Orla put down, you made sure Mr. Plume witnessed that scene. So you figured it all out, did ya? M Mr. Rhymes, are you admitting it? I didn't want to have to fight anybody but that orca. But you leave me no choice. Grrr! Now's the time to get serious! Where did that swordfish come from? Ahoy, what, what, yo, oh, yo, yo, ho, ho! Who, ahoy, me brothers, represent! And a vast ye grass eaters, they free! Take me words and pop them in your mouth! Scurvy grass eaters, kneel but to me beat me! Yo, 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 ho, ho! I'm ready for the showdown! What is going on? Where did this pirate fellow come from? He looks like a completely different person! Order! If we don't have our order, Prosecutor Blackwell will yell at us! Even Prosecutor Blackwell is at a loss for words! So, I plan to have that uh, wench hinch be a witness. Har har har. Her, you got me out. It be true. Who I thought that orca's murderous at ways he should be found out. That be why I scammed, schemed to have Miss De Bloom, whom be the see the body. So you admit it? You deliberately framed Orla? Arr, it be true. But what skin be that of half of anybody's nose? That orca be a murdering scurvy dog. In any... I may have a grudge against that orca, but I always felt grateful towards the captain. Cap'n. The orca murdered Azura and the cap'n, and so of course she would walk the plank. Yeah, I don't have a reason, I don't have a response for that. I agree, it wouldn't be, he, make any sense for him to kill the owner. Why would he? But his heart for the, hatred for the orca, for Orla, on the other hand, comes through loud and clear. Wait a minute. If killing Shipley doesn't make sense, who would it make sense to for Rhymes to kill? Maybe my theory has been all wrong. Your Honor, I think I just became aware of a new fact. Oh? And what is that? Now that we know Mr. Rhymes' intense hatred for Orla, it turns the premise we've been arguing under her the ra under its ear. I will now reveal the identity of the individual Mr. Rhymes meant to kill from the start. Take that! What? So the witness's intent was to kill the orca? Exactly. The witness's his intended victim was not Jack Shipley. From the start, it was all a scheme to kill Orla. The orca was the true target. 
but Jack Shipley was the one who died. The Orca is alive and quite well. Hmm, he's right. He wanted to kill the Orca, and yet it was Jack Shipley who fell to his death. How did that happen? Wait a minute. What if... What if Mr. Rhymes wanting to kill Orla was somehow connected to Mr. Shipley's death? <laughs> At a loss for words, are you? What happened to your bravado a moment ago? Enough of these reckless words. Without any basis, is in fact... They aren't reckless words. The basis for my claim is the real murder scene. The show pool! What are you talking about? It's my contention and that two incidents happened at the show pool. The attempted murder of the orca and the falling and the victim falling to his death. First of all, in order to kill the orca, Mr. Ryan's removed something from the scene. And by doing so, he made it possible for Mr. Shipley to fall to his death. He did what now? Mr. Wright, what did Mr. Rhymes remove in an attempt to kill the Orca? What else do you think it was? Take that! Don't tell me you're trying to claim he tried to kill the Orca by draining the pool water. That's exactly what I'm claiming. To help the defendant and him with the cleaning, Marlon Rhymes took, a, took charge of Orla. with a plan to kill the orca in the show pool. And because of the pool water it was drained. It made it possible for Jack Shipley to fall to his death in the show pool. I tried to kill the orca, you say? Can you even prove there was nearly a drop of water in the pool? That day I was simply looking after the orca. Why would I have the monstrous thought of killing it? You claim you were looking after Orla in the early morning hours of the July 20th. But... I don't think you were doing the, a very good job of it. After all, Orla wasn't given anything to eat during that time. How would ye know of such a thing? I know because of Orla's record here in the torpedo data system. This system continuously records data on the subjects in motions, monitors. From Orla's record, we can tell exactly when she ate or didn't eat. Sink me. Nobody ever told me about that dastardly contraption. Only a few shipmates, uh, only a few of the ship shape aquarium staff members know about the system. According to Orla's record, she never ate in those early morning hours on the 20th. You planned to kill the orca, huh? and that's why you didn't feed her. Hmm. You're wasting time. What proof do you have of that? Perhaps the orca simply wasn't hungry. Eck, he's right. He did. I don't have any proof. If Orla simply didn't eat, then that would create an inconsistency. Where did her fish go? Her fish? Good question. 
Where did it disappear to? Fish? What does it matter? What relevance does it have in this case? Cease this stalling with inconsequential questions. Stop delving into the depths of the orca's stomach and delve into this case instead. But wait, it may seem like a small inconsistency, but it's an issue of great importance, I think. What are you drive, di driving at, Mr. Wright? How could the fish disappear? Someone must have eaten it. So, who came to the show's stage room and ate Orla's fish? I think I might have a pretty good idea. I believe there must have been a visitor, her to the show's stage, that Mr. Rhymes didn't notice. Visitor? Are you trying to introduce yet another suspect at this 11th hour? If you're... If you utter more of your careless remarks, Taka won't look favorably upon it. I don't plan to utter any careless remarks. Whether my remarks will actually be related to the case or not, I do not know yet. Don't worry, boss. If Taka comes this way, I'll fend him off. But do try to keep your remarks careful. Somehow, Orla's fish disappeared. Somebody must have visited the sta show stage, but who? This was the visitor her to the stage show. I believe Rifle the Penguin visited the stage show stage. First an orca, now a penguin. Why would ye be saying such a thing, Mr. Lawyer? I didn't see Rifle during the wee early morning hours. Do ye have any proof of Rifle visiting the show stage? If ye be a lawyer of any salt, show your evidence! The bottom of Rifle's feet were pink for some reason. The fact is a clue that Rifle was indeed at the show stage. I have to present that ev piece of evidence that connects Rifle to the show stage. Now to prove I'm a lawyer worth my salt. This is the proof that Rifle visited the show stage. Take that! Oh my, what a cute little sign. Hey, look at all those adorable stars. These stars are actually starfish. Miss Buckler painted hit this sign. In the early morning hours of the 20th, she left this sign in at the show stage show to dry. Mr. Rhymes kept an eye on the sign for his for Miss Buckler while all the paint was drying. Aye, that be true, but what be ye point? All on this sign is proof that Rifle visited the show stage. Proof of a penguin's visit? I'm afraid I don't see it. Where is the proof that the penguin visited the show stage? Please point it out. Take that! A couple of pink starfish are shaped a little differently from the others. Ah, you're right. They look almost like little leaves. Rifle has pink paint on the bottom of her feet. These little leaf-like shapes, heaps on the sign, are actually Rifle's footprints. Rifle made these footprints by walking on the sign before it was dry. Oh, what a cute little penguin, pink penguin prince. So there are footprints. What of them? Marlon Ryans was watching over the this sign and 
at the show's stage and while the paint dried. And during that time, the penguin paid a visit. According to this torpedo data system, we know that Rifle ate something in that morning on the 20th. Most likely, Rifle ate, ate the fish meant for Orla uh, that was at the show stage. Orla's snack was a small quantity of fish. Even a penguin could ev have eaten it all. Big God, had Rifle ate Orla's fish? Who be ye to say Rifle ate or less fish? She could e she could have picked up, up food anywhere. But that doesn't change the fact that I really was at the show stage. After all, I had to help move the skull rock, huh, but couldn't have done moved it without me. The witness claims he never saw the penguin. How do you expect to explain this contradiction. Both Mr. Rhymes and Rifle were at the show stage, but Mr. Rhymes didn't see her? So where could Mr. Rhymes have been at the time? Right, Dono. If you weren't up to the task, I could disprove this witness's testimony for you. If I leave it to Prosecutor Blackwell, Sasha will be declared guilty. I can't let him interrupt this line of reasoning. Mr. Wright, let's try to figure out how things looked when Rifle came to the show stage. Mr. Rhymes was at the show stage keeping an eye on Orla and the sign. And we know who it must be true because he helped move the Skull Rock. And then Rifle came in and walked all over the sign. But wouldn't Mr. Rhymes notice Rifle in the... if he was right there? Well, let's think about where Mr. Rhymes could have been. This is the... this is a place in the show stage area from which Rifle could have been... couldn't have been seen. Take that! What? Inside the pool? But you're right. If he was inside the pool, he wouldn't have noticed Rifle. So you're saying Mr. Rhymes was underwater the whole time Rifle was eating? No, not underwater. When I think about what he was trying to do, the answer is clear. Now I'm finally starting to get the whole picture. Just like yesterday, he must you two always be whispering to each other? Why don't you admit hit that res resorting to a penguin and we'll get you nowhere? Oh, I don't know about that. The fact that Mr. Rhymes didn't notice Rifle is such a small inconsistency. But it's a key point that proves that Mr. Rhymes was trying was trying to do. The penguin is a key point. The show stage pool is very deep. If Rifle came to visit while Mr. Rhymes was at the bottom of this pool, he would have never noticed Rifle! Arr. Orcas can be out of the water for a short time without sustaining damage. But if they are out of the water for a long time, they weaken and eventually die. In order to kill an orca, uh, Mr. Rhymes had to drain the pool. And while the pool was drained, of water, Mr. Shipley fell to his death. The show stage pool is about 65 feet deep, and just like hit the orca pool, without water in the pool, a person could be made to fall 65 feet.
Mr. Rhymes probably wondered what to do. If he continued with his plan to kill Orla, how would he dispose of the Mr. Shipley's body? So he devised a plan to kill two birds with one stone. What? How? Mr. Rhymes went down to the bottom of the pool and put the victim's body in the rock. He then had Miss Buckler move the rock and the body together. And the witness made the defendant do this somehow without her... without arousing her suspicion? That's right. Mr. Shipley, he told Miss Buckler that she couldn't perform in the new show. Miss Buckler became upset and wanted to wa switch back to the old version of the show. So Miss Buck Mr. Rhymes conveniently suggested that she take and hide the prop for the new show. Mr. Rhymes then manipulated Orla uh, using her singing and lifesaver tricks. He schemed to have Orla found in the body he, while Mr. Plume would have would be standing witness. He saddled hold Orla uh, with false charge of murder so that Orla would be put down. B what? Arr. 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 So, the fact that the witness didn't see the penguin shows that when Rifle visited the show stage, Rhymes was putting the body in the rock. At the bottom of the pool, that is. Who would have thought out of the presence of a penguin would prove the witness's actions? It's working just a little further now, and Sasha will be proven not guilty. Silence. If you think you've won this battle, you are sorely mistaken. Your theory is based on the notion that the witness could manipulate the orca. Witness, can you control the orca's action? Of course not. Uh, what kind of uh, village is that? Be that? Uh, I be but a simple animal keeper. If my memory serves, wasn't Miss Buckler the only one who could in issue commands to the Orca? Ugh. <laughs> the judge's blade is sharper than the lawyer's. If you wish to battle with a witness, you'll need a honed blade. Where is your sword of evidence that Marlin Rhymes could manipulate the Orca? Ah! Rhymes had to have manipulated Orla in order to for his plan to work. But how can I prove it? Well, it appears this line of reasoning has come unsustainable. Well, it appears that I was mistaken. A Athena? I've analyzed the hearts of all kinds of people. I have enough experience to see when I look into your heart that you haven't given up. So that objection was my way of speaking up to your heart. She's right. Why would I become a lawyer again, only to just give up? I have to keep fighting. Athena, thank you. With your help, I've remembered the old right way. The right way? Your Honor, I'm not finished with pressing my argument, presenting my argument. Hmm, do you have anything else to ask? The witness? You've cross-examined all the witnesses and presented all your evidence. All the witnesses? Hmm. I don't think so. 
I haven't cross-examined the most important one, the central figure in both cases. The central figure? The one involved in not only the case at a year ago, but this current case too. I've never called her, her as a witness, but it's time to do so now. Who are you talking about? I demand you tell the court immediately! Who is this central figure in both cases? Take that! The defense calls the central figure in both cases Orla the Orca! You, you intend to cross examine an Orca? Arr! Cross examine an Orca? Ye must be addled! Hold. It be impossible, I say! Silence! This absurdity is beyond the pale. How do you expect to question an orca, a creature incapable of speech? Orla is incre intri intricately involved in this case. I have every right to cross-examine her. Besides, even if I can't speak, even if she can't speak, I think cross-examining her will be invaluable. Very well. Do what you will, then. But if you fail to gather anything from this little exercise with the orca, I hope you realize the reward for your efforts will be the defendant's guilty verdict. I'm ready and confident. So, cross-examining Orla, huh? That's a bold move, boss. Now all we have to do is figure out how Mr. Rhymes manipulated Orla. That's right. Now, it's Orla's turn to help us save his Sarah, Sasha. An Orca defendant yesterday, an Orca witness today. This is truly unprecedented. But even though this is highly unusual, I'm prepared to allow it. Bailiff, ready the witness telecast. We'll have a 10 minute recess while the telecast is being set up. And will we be able to uh, get anything out of that? Find out next time in Let's Replay Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and would love to see more. If you do, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment if you want. Ring that bell to be notified when our next video comes out. We do new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and occasionally Saturday and Sundays. All this helps my channel to grow so you have more videos to enjoy. Until the next video, this is Sword Archild, signing off. Have a good night, folks!